So it's just gone half eight. He's still up. It's, he's ready for bed, isn't he? So am I. So um, this is Fred's bedtime routine. We've had a lot of you guys messaging us, asking us how we put Fred's bed and what we do. So we are just gonna show you a video of exactly what we do and how it goes. And um, oh, it's particularly much, yeah. Because uh, this is the time of night we just want to chill out and the Tasmanian devil comes out to play. So, um, Fred, we're going to bed. I'm going to bed. Huh? Need to go to bed now. Please. In bed? Come on. Let's go. Come on. Right, put the chair down. Come on, Mum. Let's go. Let's go to bed. Should we go to bed, Papa? Come on, we need to go to bed. Come on. Bed? Good boy. Okay. Right. So, 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 say bye. Bye. Say bye. Bye. You going to bed? No. <laughs> right. Excuse the mess. It's all Nathan's. Do you want to walk up? Come on. <laughs> Okay, okay. So, what we normally do is put him to bed. Well, we turn the TV off an hour before we go to bed and uh, do some little games, puzzles, and stuff to keep his brain ticking over. And smashing the bathroom up. And yeah. Uh, getting him tired before bed, bath time. I'm going to show you how he goes, step by step. And it normally works. He goes to bed at eight and gets up at seven, so it does work. First things first. Cara is very organised. She always puts his pajamas out first because um, when he comes out of the bath, we come in here, chill time. Um, she baths him. I do this stage and um, put a little light on. And we just make sure these are an absolute godsend. Um, blinds and uh, I forgot what they're called. Uh, blackout blinds, that's what they're called. Um, it keeps them um, with Fred. If he, if he thinks it's light outside, he'll wake up. This keeps it dark in the room, so he'll be sleeping into about, he normally sleeps into about half seven, eight o'clock some nights. So I really do um, advise getting blackout blinds, they're really good. Hi. This is my, I've spoke to people about this before, this is my Mummy Loves Organics Room Spray. It's just a lavender room spray, but it's really lovely stuff. So I just spray a bit of this in the room just to make it all nice and chilled. And then I just put it on. Well. This is Pluto. This is Fred's favourite toy that he loves. Of course. Get old Audi, Mamia, best one, love it, it smells good. amazing, you can't go wrong. So we put them in the bath to a, uh, about five minutes, don't want to get them in the bath too much. No toys. No toys. Quick rinse, in and out, he's been in his nappy all day, might have done a smelly poo. So a quick five minutes, in and out, job done. Next, for the, for the next step. Right, you ready? Out your mouth. Keep going read the book. Come here. Come here, come closer. There we go. Good little tip. Dry him while you're standing up. Because he's a wiggler. When uh, we're trying to dress him in his pajamas. Dry his neck, his bum, and his back. As much as you can. And it makes your life Ten times easier. Do you want to read a book? No. Huh? Come on in. Do I hear Cuddles? Oh, that's nice. Right, put the nappy on. Nappy, 
place. Sit down. One leg in. Good boy. One leg in. Another leg in. So you want to raise? Stand up. It's a two-man operation with this child, unfortunately. One leg, please, car. Fred. If you've got a dummy, try and get one with a dummy clip because it used to wake him up all the time because his dummy would fall out and he couldn't find it, so. It's always strapped to him. Can you, uh, up you go, up you go, up you get. Can you put Pluto to bed? Put Pluto to bed. Good boy. Yeah, ready to get in bed. Oh. Do you want to read a book? Yeah? yeah. Tuck you in. Okay. So Fred's a quite a wriggler, so I like to tuck his covers in where it's getting a bit colder now. What have you said about this? It just makes it a bit easier. Where is it? And then also, what we've got for Fred, it's just a bolster that goes on into his mattress and you just literally put it on and then put his sheet over the top. It just helps him not to fall out. <clears throat> That's it. Right. This is one of my favourites. Okay. The rainbow fish. He likes it. Night night. Say night night. No, go and say it. Night night. Right, good night, Baba. Love you. So, the rainbow fish, alright? I like to add my voice, isn't it? So, a long way out in the deep blue sea lived a fish. Not just an ordinary fish, but the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. His scales were every shade of blue, green and purple, with sparkling silver scales among them. Other fish were amazed by his beauty. They called him Rainbow Fish. Come and play Rainbow Fish, they were called. Come and play with us. But the rainbow fish would just glide past, proud and silent, letting his scowl shimmer. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow fish, he called. Wait for me. Give me one of your shiny scouts. They are so wonderful. You have so many. You want me to give you one of my special scouts? Who do you think you are? cried rainbow fish. Get away from me shot the little blue fish swam away. He was so upset he told all his friends what had happened to him. From then on, no one would have anything to do with rainbow fish. They turned away when he swam by. What good were these dazzling shimmery scales for no one to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the entire ocean. One day he poured out his troubles to a starfish. I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anybody like me? I can't answer that for you, said the starfish. But if you go beyond the coral reef, find a dark cave where the wise octopus, maybe she can help you. The rainbow fish found the cave, it was very dark inside, and he couldn't see anything. Then suddenly, two eyes caught him in the glare, and the octopus emerged from the darkness. I've been waiting for you, said the octopus with a deep voice. The wave have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scowl to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea, but you will discover how to be happy. I can't, the rainbow fish started to say, but the octopus already disappeared into a dark cloud of ink. Give away my scowls, my beautiful shiny scowls. How could I ever be happy without them? Suddenly it felt a light touch of the fin. A little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want a little scowl. 
brain back fish wavered. Only one very shimmery scale, he thought. Or maybe I wouldn't miss just one. Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish. Thank you, thank you ever so much, the little blue fish bubbly playfully. And he tucked a shiny scale amongst the other blue ones, a rather peculiar feeling come over the rainbow fish. For a long time he watched the little blue swim fish swim back and forth with his new scale glimmering in the water. The little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing. So it wouldn't take long before rainbow fish surrounded by other fish. Everyone wanted the glittery scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right. And the more he gave away, the more delighted he came. When the water around him was filled with glimmery scales, he at last felt at home among the other fish. Finally, the rainbow fish had one shiny scale left. His most prized possession had been given away. Yet, yeah, he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, they called. Come and play with us. Here I come, said the rainbow fish. Happy as a splash, he swam off to join his friends. The end.